गुड मॉर्निंग फ्रेंड्स वेलकम बैक टू माय यूट्यूब चैनल मेडिकल क्लासेस बाय डॉक्टर श्रीनिधि कुमार आचार्य डोंट फॉरगेट टू सब्सक्राइब माय चैनल एंड आल्सो प्लीज गिव योर वैल्यूबल कमेंट्स सो फ्रेंड्स वी वर डिस्कसिंग अबाउट डिफरेंट वाइटल डेटास इन द ड्यू एक्सपेक्ट्स ऑफ हिस्ट्री टेकिंग सो वी हैव कम्प्लीटेड अप टू प्लेस एज नेम सेक्स एजुकेशनल स्टेटस एंड प्लेस हैज़ बिन कम्प्लीटेड नाउ वट इज द इम्पोर्टेंस ऑफ रिलीजन एंड कास्ट caste or religion in the history taking which will be covered in the context of vital data now we know that uh, as far as the medical history is concerned uh, taking history of the religion and caste or one particular uh, uh, religion caste or panth so that is very important because that gives some of the clues in the medical history okay uh because we know that uh, caste wise in india especially the tradition will going to change the food habits will going to change and the lifestyle will also going to change and uh, different social activities going to change according to the caste so uh, knowing the caste is of little medical importance now if you talk in india especially hindu muslims christians sikhs parsis so many castes are there okay or religions are there rather religions are there and even in one religion there are so many sub castes are there now to some to some extent it gives a medical information for example in case of the muslims uh the muslims ladies who are wearing the burqa so they are less exposed to the sunlight and chances related to vitamin d deficiency and the problems related to vitamin d is quite common in those ladies similarly those uh, hindus who are very strict vegetarians so they are also most susceptible for vitamin b12 deficiency okay and christians uh, many times they are also uh, more prone to certain cosmetic problems and skin related problems and uh, the related to hair and all problems are quite common in sikh sikh community so like this to some extent this particular uh, religion and caste so that gives some medical <coughs> clues for which helps in the further diagnosis to take some of the important aspects now uh, for example in case of muslims there is a custom of uh, early circumcision <coughs> and uh, mo- uh, it may be done under medical supervision or it may not be done under me- medical supervision so when it is not done under medical supervision and uh, the chance of complication is there chances of infection is there and related problems may be there and there are some sub caste or caste system which existing and some of the food habits are accordingly for example there are few uh, sub caste within hindu so those who do not take the uh, uh, garlic okay or they used to prepare the food in particular vessels and uh, so those who start annaprasana quite later in the neonatal period uh, infantile period so these are some of the issues that helps uh, to take some of the medical clues okay so now indian childhood cirrhosis although the prevalence is now decreased previously this is a big problem and those who are used to prepare the food in the copper alloy vessel any vessel where the copper has been used as alloy uh, like pital etc so they are more prone to develop indian childhood cirrhosis because of the copper deposition in the body of course nowadays this tendency is not there but still this point has to be identified okay there are so many strict vegetarians they may suffer from some of the vitamin deficiency disorders and uh, uh, similarly in the context of uh, annaprasana and phalaprasana so different familial customs are there so they some of the families they start annaprasana at the early part uh, as early as 6 to 7 months itself and some may start annaprasana as uh, in the later part of the infantile period like 10th month onwards so this may lead to some of the nutritional problems so this part has to be clear therefore uh, caste sub caste and that's community so this also gives some of the clues for identification of the disease diagnosis of the disease as different religion caste community have got different way of lifestyle different food style 
a different uh, way of uh, um, living so therefore it is better to take this religion and caste history also another important uh, point in the vital data is nutritional status so you have to identify the nutritional status the details of the nutrition will be taken in the nutrition history also but uh, this much of uh, uh, a small information should be also gathered in the vital data what about the nutrition status whether they are uh, uh, well built or poor built or the nutrition is proper now in the nutrition what you have to take you have to take quality and quantity of the food that has been taken a total amount of the food which is prepared in the home and how many uh, within how many people this particular food has been shared okay so number of members in the family and the number of earning person in the family or total earning capacity so that has to be estimated and later the whether the food they are taking whether it is calorically rich or not so whether the food the nutrition they are taking so that is a complete food or not okay so what is their staple food what is their uh, concept of complete food whether it is or balanced food whether it is followed or not they may be taking lot of rice but it is not considered as complete food okay so uh, they are not taking the ghee at all or oil at all in their food it's not a complete food so like their food hygiene nutritionally how much they are aware which type of nutrition are there because nowadays the most common problem is malnutrition overnutrition and undernutrition both malnutrition means abnormal nutrition overnutrition means obesity exogenous obesity and undernutrition means a poor nutrition okay so all the three problems are common therefore uh, uh, those who are having good amount of uh, economical support so they are now developing overnutrition and those who are not having the money so they are developing undernutrition so that part has to be cleared then food hygiene is over complete food concept is over now junk food okay nowadays this is a, a biggest problem so people are involved in the involved much intake of uh, junk food so uh, this is also not good so i will not go in detail trans fat and all those things okay adulteration of the food is also a big problem now and also natural food very few people are taking therefore the nutritional status how is their nutrition whether they are aware of the quality and quantity of the food caloric aspect of the food whether the food which is prepared in their home is sufficient for all the members how many members are there what is the staple food whether they are involved more in junk food whether the food hygiene has been followed or not so this point and all this point has to be asked in the nutritional status okay nutritional uh, uh, status then you have to discuss whether it's a well built moderate built or poor built of course the same point also comes in the uh, general examination also okay in the general examination we will have there we will have the detailed examination but here it is just information about the nutritional status another one is the marital status of course you can ask in the newborn baby and the infants or in the childhood period or even up to the adolescents marital status is not a, a not actually valid for the kids but marital status of the parents is very important okay this is not applied to the kid but for the parents it's applied okay now what are the things that you have to ask especially whether the child which is there so he whether he is an adopted child or biological mother or parents or whether consanguinity is there so these points has to be asked uh, married between the close relatives first degree relative secondary relative that has to be asked because it's very important for the identification of the chromosomal disorders rather the hereditary disorders you have to check whether the child is adopted child or a naturally born child then uh, uh, IVF whether the child was born by IVF like methods or other surrogate food methods like that so this portion has to be asked this is especially asking the marital status for the baby okay so we have to inquire the detail how this particular baby was born uh, by the parents okay therefore it is very important to ask the marital status of the couples okay now now one more important aspect here is early marriage and late marriage so early marriage mostly uh, the primaries, early primaries, so they are more prone to uh, produce the premature babies or low birth weight babies and also some of the congenital abnormalities. And even the late primary also, uh, there is a big problem is there. Advanced maternal age, okay. So we know that some of the chromosomal problems are more common in the advanced maternal age like Down syndrome. 
Similarly, advanced paternal age is also quite commonly seen in some of the chromosomal pattern, disordered person. For example, uh, achondroplasia. Achondroplasia is one such condition where we have seen that advanced paternal age, advanced age of the father, okay, that has been the significant uh, uh, cause for achondroplasia like uh, conditions. Then we have to ask about the familial complex in the marital status. Then we have to look into single mother and uh, staying in the hostel or under different custody etc this portion has to be asked so these are the different points that you have to enquire in the marital status of the child now come to the socio-economic status of the child here also socio-economic status of the parents has to be understood usually a modified kupu swami rating method is there okay modified kupu swami scaling uh, scale is there okay so this has been used for the medical purpose some other scales are also available like pradhan and all okay but uh, modified kupu swami uh, 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 scaling for uh, socio economic status has to be followed for the medical purpose uh, then uh, economical status is very important to provide the good nutrition we know that okay so if uh, economy is very poor then there's a poverty and the starvation like problems are quite common so under nutrition over nutrition has to be see the other important data are ipd number opd number bed number ward number and date of admission and date of discharge so these are some of the essential part which has to be understood when you are taking the vital data so so far we have seen different vital data these are called as vital data because this is very vital okay so in the next class onwards we will go with the the further parts of the uh, history taking and uh, this is about the vital data Thank you very much. We will meet again.